small farmers on the high plains of Laramie, Wyoming. And we've got some big ideas that will help you and your family grow up. When you're thinking about the type of fish that you choose for your aquaponic system, you want to be careful to match the fish to the location, to the environment, to the resources you have available. So if you're in Australia, you're going to naturally pick a different uh, type of fish than you will if you're in North America. Or if you're in Europe or uh, Southeast Asia, it's going to be different than uh, somewhere else. So um, the big thing with fish is making sure that it can live within the temperature range that you can supply. It's making sure that you can you have feed to feed it. You have got some kind of feed resource, and uh, just making sure that it's not invasive. It's it's something that you can uh, legally use in your area. So these are all kind of important things to consider. Here in Wyoming, um, we use Nile tilapia. Now, is that the best choice for this area? Probably not. But it's what we started with, so it's what we've got now. It's just cheaper and easier to continue with Nile tilapia than to transition to some other uh, type of fish. Um, when you're feeding your fish, there's all sorts of alternate feeds out there. People will talk about duckweed or black soldier fly or yada, yada, yada. The reality is, is if you're going to do a large operation, you're going to end up doing, uh, using some kind of commercial fish feed. So um, the big thing to remember with commercial feeds is you want to match your protein content to the requirements of your fish. Uh, you want to be able to find feeds with different types of protein, different amounts of protein in them, and you want to be able to uh, change the protein in the feed to get different results from your system. So if I need to see more uh, nitrogen in my system solution, I'll feed a little bit higher protein feed. It's going to put a little bit more nitrogen in my system. A more ammonia will be produced. Um, the fish, for us, are a means to an end. So we don't really harvest the fish. Uh, I do care about F, uh, feed conversion ratio ratios, um, they're still important, but because we don't really harvest our fish that often, um, I'm not really paying as much attention to uh, my weight gain as I am just trying to give my uh, system solution the optimal nutrient uh, values for my, for my plants. So when I'm growing out there, I just want to make sure my plants are healthy. That's the primary, of primary importance to me. With fish, you want to keep real close tabs on temperature and ammonia. For temperature sensitive species, temperature is very important. For something like a tropical cichlid, like we use, if it drops below 55 degrees, we're in trouble. If we hit 50, they're dead. So we try to keep uh, really close tabs on our temperature and make sure we're within an acceptable range. Another thing you want to keep track of is your ammonia and your nitrites, especially in young systems. Nitrites will disappear pretty quickly because they're pretty volatile once they're introduced to the microbes in your system and once your system is, is mature. Uh, nitrites get oxidized fairly rapidly. Um, it's ammonia that will be kind of the ongoing thing you want to keep tabs on. High ammonia, ammonia levels are toxic to fish, so you want to try and keep your ammonia uh, fairly low. And uh, in between those three things, those are, the, those are the biggies. If you're doing really aggressive stocking, you're going to have to keep track of dissolved oxygen, which I've talked about in another video. But by and large, in aquaponic systems, these things won't be as much of a problem if you design the system well, if you've got a lot of biofiltration, and if you're paying close attention to your fish behavior and also uh, to, to how your, your plants are looking. By and large, it's a great media because it lasts forever, it's very durable, and it provides us a lot of specific surface area, okay?